to take us there. Let us call on Ms. Eunice Gonzalez, Marketing Communications Director of Robinson's Land, to introduce our speaker. Good afternoon. Our next speaker is one of the founders of Vintulum Limited, provider of innovative products and services for retail, CPG, and logistics industries, including business consulting services, application development and support, package implementation services, product engineering services and development, and integration services. He has been responsible for creating multiple startup operations for leading IT and technology companies in Asia. He has also created businesses in many countries in Asia, including Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, China, and Korea. He is passionate in creating real business value to customers and in creating themes who strive to delight their customers through operational and technological excellence. He holds an MBA from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. Ladies and gentlemen, Vinculum's Director for Strategic Relationships, Mr. Wenkat Nod. Magadong Hapon. So I hope I pronounced it right. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's uh, start the afternoon with a few historical predictions. It's more like uh, I'm, I'm going to open it up to the audience to guess some of these questions. I'll start with one where the answer is there. Are we familiar with this? There's a world market for about five computers. Has anyone heard about this prediction before? That was a prediction made by the chairman of IBM once upon a time. And we know the result, right? The second one uh, is a paper by a student who presented a mechanism for overnight delivery service. The professor of Yale University said, the concept is very interesting, but you can't get more than a C because it has to be feasible. It's not really feasible to have an overnight delivery service. Anyone who is uh, the individual behind this paper? Any answers? Uh, this was uh, the founder of DHL, Fred Smith. So uh, the professor said, you can't get more than a C, it's not good enough. We don't like their sound. Group of guitars are on the way out. It was, this was something in 1962. I'm sure in Philippines people will know what I'm talking about. Decca Records threw this band of guitarists out. Anyone want to guess who this is? Beatles, yeah, exactly. So Decca Records threw them out saying that you're not good enough and the trends are that group of guitarists won't succeed. 640 KB is ought to be enough for anybody, of course. It is, right? This is our dear old Bill Gates. And the last one, which is my favorite, there were a group of uh, youngsters who went to HP and said, we'll build a fantastic computer for you. Please, we don't need any steak. We have fantastic ideas. Could you help us? Just give us salary. We will work for you. And HP, of course, said no. And Atari said no as well. Any guesses who this person is and his friends were? Steve Jobs. <laughs> so, so what I'm trying to say is predictions are pretty tough. And predicting what is in the future is very, very tough. Most people get it wrong. So they've been talking of a lot of things in terms of what works, in terms of trends. But, yeah, I mean, it's really tough to get it right. So let's look at a few obvious ones. And some of them should be obvious to predict. Almost all the speakers before me have been 
talking about how mobile solutions uh, are the in thing and uh, there are a lot of interesting solutions which have been pointed out and we are going to cover a video which shows one part of what the future looks like, in fact it's the present. There's some retailers in South Korea who are doing it right now. Before we go to the next one, um, what is obvious is mobile solutions are here and there are a lot of interesting opportunities to enhance the customer experience. There's absolutely no doubt there are a lot of opportunities for retailers to do so. The key things are two. One is part of the cost involved and two which in my view is more important, getting it right. Fulfillment is key. Now what can go wrong here? Yesterday, a speaker was talking about a basketball fan, let's say it's me, Venkat Nod, buying a plasma TV to watch a key match on the, in the weekend. He goes online, makes a purchase, and uh, looks for a delivery by Saturday. But online when he goes, he cannot do it because the earliest delivery date is Monday. So he goes, calls the call center, who say, great, no problem, Mr. Nard. You can pick it up from our Mall of Asia store, and uh, you can pick it up today or tomorrow. So at your convenience, you can pick it up. And he goes, picks up, and then he has a blast on Saturday watching his basketball match. All wonderful, I've had a great time. But the issue here is, we're talking of multi-channel fulfillment. So we're talking of online store, we're talking of call center, we're talking of integration with the systems in the store, we're talking of being the, the product being available for pickup. The first thing which can go wrong is Venkat not, may become not Venkat and the call center doesn't recognize me and I'll be frustrated because I'm calling, I have an order number, they can't figure out that I'm calling and I have a valid purchase. The second thing which may happen is the store information in terms of the available stock may not be integrated with the information that the call center executive has. Now I'm not trying to say that systems are not there. What I'm trying to say is things can go wrong. And so you go to the store to pick up a plasma TV, the store manager says, sorry sir, we don't have it in stock, you can come back next week and collect it. So there goes the story 
and you have a very sad customer. It's very important to get the fulfillment right. So integration of multiple systems is extremely key. There is no doubt that you can enhance the customer experience if you get that right. So what you need to do is to take extreme care to get the systems integrated well and a lot of planning has to go, a lot of piloting has to go in place to make sure that you're actually doing it right and doing it right the first time. So let's uh, go to a few more obvious solutions. What we saw there was uh, handheld solutions. Um, it's a common problem for many retailers to have long queues at the POS. QBuster software is popular in the Western countries, and we can see that this is something which will pick up in this part of the world as well. And it's an interesting solution. You can also do your stock take much faster, receiving much faster, much more efficient. So, uh, handheld solutions are clearly an interesting opportunity area. Uh, you obviously have to get the pricing right in terms of the handheld devices, which is the main part of the expense. But again, in terms of the customer experience that you can provide to the customer, in terms of rest reduced queues, I think uh, it's a no-brainer. I'm going to um, spend little time, not much on social media, because uh, there have been a lot of uh, speakers who have spoken about it. But let's quickly look at a few stats. When you look at uh, people who are using social media to uh, actually track products or companies, uh, retailers from whom they purchase, it's uh, very clear that more than 60% of the people track one to five companies. So uh, what it tells you is there's a very clear opportunity to upsell, to sell your products well, to uh, enhance the number of customers you can reach to, and well, it's only going to increase. Similarly, the kind of information people look for in terms of learning about products or learning about promotions, clearly on the sales side, there is extremely good opportunity to increase your sales. What can go wrong? What can go wrong is the simple fact, bad news travels extremely fast and viral marketing can go absolutely ballistic if you don't have your basic four P's right. You do your business well, you have great products, you have great products at right prices, right promotions, fulfill it well, then viral marketing will help you. If you don't get the fulfillment right, you essentially have multiplied your problems many, many, many times. And that's the problem with social media. You have to make sure that what you're doing is right. Yesterday there was again an example where a lady said, I can't find what you're talking about online, which is exact, may not be the right example here, but 
if there is a customer complaint and you're offering, uh, let's say this is available online and uh, you're not able to respond to the complaint fast, that news will travel very fast. You need a systemic control mechanism in terms of how you can get the alerts to make sure that you're able to service your potential customers or actual customers right. So that is key in terms of getting your social media strategy right. Time isn't on my side. I just have 20 minutes here, but uh, let me try to cover a few more. This is a very interesting topic, price markdown and profit optimization. Uh, this is a, clearly a wave in the Western markets, particularly US. What it talks about is a mathematical way in which you can uh, identify whether you are not making the right pro profits at your store. Let's say you have a liter of milk which is selling at 100 pesos in your store. Because it's a fresh food uh, with a limited expiry date, you essentially want to make sure that the stock is cleaned up before the expiry date. So you mark down one day before the expiry date to 70 pesos or 60 pesos. Now, what is the right price you mark it down to? Should it be 70 pesos? Or should it be 75? Or should it be 80 pesos? So you need, when I mean, there is a very interesting mathematical model in which you track down past history information for the last two years data and compare it with your competition information, let's say through Nielsen data, where you compare, look at what is the right price point to mark it down to. So it's an algorithm based uh, engine, let's say, to keep it simple, which actually takes in the data of all your pricing information and gives you recommendations in terms of what prices you should sell at. This could be markdowns, this could be actual price at which you sell products, it could be the promotions you do. So this, particularly for grocery and convenience stores and hardware stores, is a no-brainer. You can see ROI less than six months, particularly when we are talking of less than 10% profitability. Just think about what impact this can have. And uh, projects in this space typically get driven by outcomes, which means if you get the outcome in terms of increased profit is, is a function of what you pay. So it's actually very interesting. It's worth taking a look. A few not so obvious ones. We're talking of uh, uh, one of my colleagues last year spoke about master data management. And uh, uh, I'm trying to give a different angle to this, saying you have a beautiful building, but the foundation is not weak. You have a BI that throws up beautiful dashboard, beautiful information in terms of what revenue per store, how the products are selling, but you don't have your items right, you don't have your suppliers right, you don't have your customers right. Remember, I spoke about the basketball fan, Venkat not versus not Venkat, issues like that. So there are a lot of issues which you tend to have because of lack of consistent data between the enterprise. So this is a very serious topic, I'll have to spend more time, don't have the time to talk about it, but a simple thing which I will talk about is the kind of issues you make with wrong information. Well, Bush did find all the weapons, didn't he? So, we lost so many lives and we are still fighting the war. Not necessarily Iraq, but it took a long time to get it cleaned up. Uh, uh, the other areas which are very interesting for you to explore is open source versus license models. There are a lot of open source based products today. In fact, uh, our suite of products are also based on LAMP stack, which is open source based, essentially to bring the TCO down, so which is a total cost of ownership. Uh, I'll, I'll skip through it, but um, essentially what we are talking about is you, you don't need to spend loads and loads of money on licensed software today. There are interesting options available. You can pilot options and uh, you should look at at least certain areas where you know Linux based software is quite reliable these days. It is worth paying a uh, look at it. Now with this particular point what I'm talking about, importance of time relations is yeah, I mean so we all know what happened on second August. 
So a lot of politicking and last minute decision making. You have to make time notations quickly and in time for you to get the results. I'll just let you have a quick look. Essentially lower cost of ownership and uh, the LAMP stack is pretty scalable. Open source products are uh, definitely an opportunity which is available specifically to small and medium retailers. Uh, well, that's an obvious question, but uh, what I'm trying to say, you don't have to do just because someone has uh, 60 percent of the market does a particular thing, you don't have to go and do the same thing. I've heard this uh, many, many times, saying that this retailer bought that product. Similarly, the next 10 retailers buy the same product. You got to look at what makes sense, and you got to have the guts to look at when 60 per 80 percent of the market used to have a Walkman. Who will buy a Walkman today? Will e-commerce work in the Philippines? I think it will. There are a few enabling things which are required. Um, I'll just throw your attention to what happened in the Indian market. Till about two years back, in India, people used to say, everybody likes to go to the store, nobody will buy online. It's a waste of time. More than a billion dollars have gone into creating startups and e-commerce in India in the last two years. In fact, in the last one year. And we have a bookstore called Flipkart, which is expected to be as big as Amazon, and it's two years old. So what's, what, what I'm trying to drive at is there is a focused initiative by the government to set up the infrastructure to improve the internet and telco infrastructure, which enables e-commerce companies to do well. So this is something definitely which uh, is an opportunity as a new channel for Philippine retailers. And I think PRA as an association has a role to play in terms of providing the enablement here. So, but as a channel, definitely it's an opportunity. Sorry, flip too fast. So that brings us to what Vinculum does. It's just a one quick slider. I just wanted you to have a look. So these are suite of products on LAMP. We do e-retail, which is back-end supply chain for e-commerce. Master data management, which is a rules-based engine for enterprise data, handheld solutions, and uh, we have we do a lot of product implementations for customers like Metro. We are uh, implementing the Oracle suite and also our MDN product there. Price and profit optimization, BI solutions, all the things, fancy things I spoke about, the which are obvious and not so obvious as well. So the social media consulting and mobile app development, these are all areas which we work in. And we're backed by Axel Partners, who are incidentally the uh, leading investor in Facebook, Walmart.com, Groupon. So our investors are the same. Wrap up. So I don't have time to cover this, but I'm going to do this very, very quick. Give me three minutes. Yeah. So what I'm going to talk about is, see, in terms of implementations, what goes wrong? Um, you have to get the executive buy-in as the first step. So there are a lot of fancy ideas you may go off as a business team or an ID team. You need a sponsor. You need the dollars to back you up. And you need someone strong in the organization to back you up. And you have to communicate across the organization. You have to create excitement in terms of the initiatives that you build within the organization. So it is adoption which makes which makes the difference. It doesn't matter what you implement. If people are not going to use it, then it's not worth it. It won't give you the result. Uh, you have to identify a strong spot, which is you have to identify a single point of contact who will manage the initiative for you. And in terms of selecting the vendors, pay for the team, look for, meet the key project team members, make sure you get, you pay for the actual intelligence and the capability. Plan for a contingency, what I mean is that not that vendors will come and ask you more, but you don't have to be in a situation where you have to go and do a board and ask for more money. Keep a contingency budget. Agree on a task-wise cal calendarized plan before you sign the contract. Make the vendor think. Make the vendor think through all the issues. Make them sit down and give you a complete detailed project plan activity-wise. Tell them to show you uh, what is going to happen during the implementation. And define responsibilities. What will you do? What will the vendor do? Define the resource requirements. Make sure the business team has the time 
let them commit to the initiative, let them give the time for doing the implementation, define the acceptance criteria. Let there be no vague acceptance criteria requirements there. Weekly reviews and monthly reviews. Make sure you do it along with your partner. Don't the old model of trying to say me versus you doesn't work. Most of the problems in project implementations happen because of that. No room for politics. Make sure you manage. Of course, there is politics always, but manager. Make sure the vendor and you are a single team. Anyway, that's a very quick snapshot of how we work. All the decisions we take are essentially from the customer's perspective. That's why when I sit in front of the customer, I'm a pretty hated man in terms of the delivery. They, they look at making sure that, you know, they, there's no hidden things. People know that whatever we do is absolutely open and transparent to the customer. So any decision we make, whether it's the people on the project, the kind of pricing, everything is tuned to what is correct for the customer. There are many, well, I can go on a lot of examples here, I don't have the time here. But uh, essentially, you have to look at what is right for the customer, even if it means less money for the vendor, which is the approach we take. Because the long term, that's what we'll pay. We measure our success with the difference we bring to our customers. And with that, I end my presentation. Those are kind of customers who work with Metro in Philippines, of course, is one of our esteemed customers. I'm open for questions. Please shoot. Did I make sense or was I too fast? Or I didn't make any sense? So it has to be two. Just completely understood or nothing understood. Uh, you have a local office? Sorry, sir. Go ahead. You have local office or we have to... We, 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 are, we have a team of 30 locally, sir. So we, we are in the process of uh, registering a local company. We have 30 people physically present in Philippines. We have uh, setups in Manila and Cebu. Uh, so you will have a support team? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Time for one more. <laughs> <laughs> Golden Savant. <laughs> इतनी बकर के बाद टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रेंड के बाद ये सारी ऑफिस आई थी। कैन आई हैव अ नेम? थैंक्स थैंक्स फॉर द राइट टू बी एंड रिजल्ट यू आर। आई थिंक दें गिव मी टू मोर मिनट्स फॉर द क्वेश्चंस इफ दे आर देयर। If there are no more questions, I thank you very much and I thank PRA for giving me the opportunity to present to the audience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nott. May we call on session chair, Ms. Gonzalez, to be joined by Ms. Rose All to present the plaque to our speaker. Moving on with our presentation, ladies and gentlemen, finding the right...